Hello everyone and welcome to the video. For today's video, it'll be the 10 year review on our 2014 Toyota Tundra. I know it has been quite a while since you guys have seen this truck. I think the last time I showed it was the family fleet update I did last year, a little over a year ago, something like that. But the last time you guys actually saw a, an actual review on it, I believe was like in 2018 or something like that. Oddly enough, this truck has been in our family fleet the longest. We've had it since before I even started YouTube. We got it in summer of 2014. I can't remember the exact date since it was so long ago, but I know it was in June of 2014. I know I haven't really done a great job of keeping guys up to date on this truck over the years that we've had it, especially since this is the vehicle that we've had the longest. But part of the reason for that, like I explained in the family fleet update last year, is not really a whole lot happens with this truck throughout the years and it's really not available for you know making a video on all that often because this is my mom's daily driver basically over the past 10 years it's only been driven to work and back which is not a real far drive at all so it has extremely low mileage for its age and like i said she works every day works extremely long hours every single day of the week sometimes even on weekends so the truck is just not really available to film all that often so I got a good chance to film it today, so I thought I'd film the 10-year review on it. I haven't really done yearly reviews on it like I have the other vehicles. I'll try to find more time to give this truck more screen time on the channel if you guys want to see it more often. But like I said, not really much happens with it, so I really wouldn't have much to talk about in yearly updates. But anyway, yeah, we've had this truck for 10 years now. It's been an amazing truck. Obviously, this is one of the most reliable trucks out there that you can buy. There's been several of them over the years that have hit a million miles. These Tundras are solid trucks and most well known for being one of the most reliable, if not the most reliable truck on the road. And like I said, it has extremely low mileage, so it's held up pretty well. The inside's in great shape and it's overall in really nice shape. This is the second generation Toyota Tundra, which came out for the 2007 model year. And this generation of Tundra, as you guys probably know, was out for a pretty long time. The generation ran from 2007 to 2021 with several facelifts over the years. 2014 was when this generation Tundra had its first heavy facelift with front and rear styling changes and a whole redesigned interior for the 2014 model year. So this was a pretty heavy refresh. For the longest time, I thought it was technically a redesign, but it was actually just a heavy facelift. And then a few years later in 2018, they added some more updates to the Tundra, new infotainment system and stuff like that. And then I think in 2020, they added several more things to it. And then finally in 2022 is when they released the third generation Toyota Tundra. Here's the key right here. It's just the regular old school remote and separate, separate key blade. This model does not have the smart key access, unfortunately. They didn't add that until either 2018 or 2020, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Also, this generation Tundra didn't have remote start for the longest time either, and this model year is one of them. They didn't add that until way later either. If they added it at all, I can't remember. A few years ago, we actually added a aftermarket remote start system for it, which works pretty good. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. So what you do, you have the this button right here. It says engine start stop. If the camera would focus, there we go. And basically, you just hold it down, and it does its thing. then it'll beep after the truck started and you can actually start it from really far away my mom has started it from like in her office before at work and it's clear out in the parking lot and it starts and it works like any other smart key access system where basically it's locked right now so then you got to unlock it and then once you come in here And then it's beeping again to let me know that the door opened. Then once you come in here, I, all you gotta do is put the put the key in here like normal and then uh, power it on. And then put your foot on the brake and you're ready to go. So it works just like any other normal remote remote start system. So it's pretty nice to have. We decided to go ahead and get that because this truck actually sits outside now ever since my brother got his 2013 Mercedes C-Class back in December of 2021. 
So at about so it's been sitting outside for about a year and a half now. And obviously in the winter time it's been nice to have. But uh, yeah, like I said, extremely low mileage for its age. Only 75,000 miles in 10 years, which is crazy. As crazy as it sounds, the Tundra is actually the only vehicle in the family fleet that doesn't have six figures on the odometer. Ooh, Ferrari over there. Nice. But yeah, the Tundra is actually the only vehicle in our family fleet that doesn't have six figures on the odometer. And ironically enough, this is probably the vehicle, the vehicle in the family fleet that would go the longest mileage without heavy maintenance or anything like that. Probably the vehicle that would last the longest. Like I said, there's been several of this generation Tundra that has hit, you know, a million miles and even more than that, which is crazy on the original motor. Looking under the hood, the Tundra is powered by the 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8. By far one of the most reliable engines out there. It's been around for a really long time. Toyota used it in the Tundras, the Sequoias, the Land Cruisers, and several of their other Toyota products. So it's been around for a really long time and like I said by far one of the most reliable motors out there gas mileage is obviously terrible I think it gets like 12 or 13 miles per gallon in the city that's what this one gets at least and it strictly does in city driving so that sucks but I mean you don't buy one of these for gas mileage so it's we it's not a big deal to us at all the 2014s have like a 26 gallon tank too they I believe they updated it to a 34 Five, 36 gallon tank in like 2018 or 20 something like that this engine puts out 381 horsepower and 401 pound feet of torque tundra's pretty heavy too i think it's like 56 5700 pounds something like that pretty heavy truck looking at the headlights they are oxidizing again a little bit we did the headlight restoration kit last year but um it's starting to oxidize a little bit again but that happens with any vehicle but yeah, you have your regular incandescent headlights and incandescent turn signals, which these are also your daytime running lights. The 2014s don't have the LED running lights and the LED headlights or anything like that. They didn't add that until later on. I told my mom to swap out this, this headlight unit for the newer style, but she doesn't really care. But if it was my truck, that's what I would do. Got fog lights down there. And overall, just a a really nice looking design. I think it's aged really well. I think it'd look even better with updated LED headlight system and all that stuff. Obviously this is the limited trim level. Looking back here, you just have regular incandescent tail lights and an incandescent turn signal right there and an incandescent reverse light as well. Backup cameras right there. Looking back here, we don't have the spray in bed liners, just the regular bed liner, um, but it's held up well. The bed space is really good. We only have the double cab and not the crew max, so we have a little bit extra bed space. Looking at the door panel, we have mostly just uh, nicely grained plastic material, some rubberized material for the armrest right here, and some leather stitching right here. Lots of door storage and cup holders right there. We have automatic window right here, but it's only automatic down and not automatic up, unfortunately, and not automatic at all on, on these switches at all. One of the complaints that I have with it is how slow this driver window is. If any of you out there have this generation Tundra, I mean, even when it was newer, especially when, especially when you roll it back up, it's just so slow. I've never really understood that, but we had a 2012 Tundra before this one. It was, it was literally the same way. So I don't know what that's all about. Looking down here, we have your headlight adjuster system right there, mirror controls, and your bed light right there. And if you press this right here, if you look back in the rear window, the rear window does slide if you press that button. So that's pretty cool. If we had the crew max cab, the entire rear window would go down. But yeah, the really slow driver window is one of the only complaints that we have with this truck. And also this horrible infotainment system. We It's had nonstop issues over the year. But this is one of the earlier model years when they introduced this uh, this generation of infotainment system. Looking at the gauge cluster, it's just regular analog gauges with a small digital display in the middle that displays all sorts of different information. You got your radio controls and volume controls there. And uh, if you hit display right here, you can scroll, scroll through all this stuff right here. And like I said, 13 miles per gallon in the city, it's terrible, but it doesn't matter, I mean, we don't really care about gas mileage in this thing. 
But yeah, like I said, this infotainment system sucks. I hate it. That and the driver window is really the only complaints that we have with this truck. But uh, yeah, this thing's always slow and laggy. Obviously, it's not going to do it right now when I try to show you. And it's not actually blinking like this. That's just the camera that's making it look like that, obviously. But yeah, this thing freezes randomly. And then you got to hold down the power button and do a hard reset. And uh, it, especially on longer drives, it's it's only been taken on a few road trips. And on one of the longer road trips that we went with it a long time ago, like I said, it's only been on like two road trips. But uh, it was literally the whole way. It would just randomly just freeze and we'd have to reset it. It was so annoying. Another complaint that I personally have with it, which I mean, it doesn't surprise me that it doesn't have this, but it does not have a telescoping steering wheel. You can move it up and down, but it does not telescope and also no memory seats. And I think on higher trim levels and later model years, they added both of those. So it's whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. I don't really drive this truck all that often. So, I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. Didn't really expect it to have it anyway. Looking at the dashboard it is a nice, smooth um, plastic material. And then down below your infotainment system, you have all the climate controls right there. And uh, put it in reverse. Then when you put it in reverse, it does display an okay backup camera. Not the greatest quality, but it works. This is the six-speed automatic transmission, by the way. One of my favorite things about this truck is the amount of cup holders that it has. It has three right there and then two back there. So it's got a nice amount of cup holders. I wish more cars were like that. It also has cup holders and the door panels as well. So that's pretty awesome. And you also got a pretty big center console right here. And also my mom decided to put on these leather seat covers because the leather started wearing on the driver's side faster than, I mean, it doesn't look that bad, but it was wearing a lot faster than the other seats. So she just got these leather seat covers for it. Pretty good size center console and a pretty good size glove box as well. And uh, yeah, this interior has held up really nicely over the years. Oh, and another thing that this truck doesn't have that I really wish it did is power folding mirrors. You have to open the window and manually pull them in yourself, but no big deal. It's just another minor complaint that I personally have with it. Looking at the back seat, Unfortunately, there is no door storage on the back seat doors. I, I'm not sure if the crew maxes have that or not, but like I said, this is only the double cab and not the crew max. Still a pretty decent size rear seat. And if you lift this up, there is some storage underneath the seats as well. And obviously you got another uh, car charger back here, 12 volt power outlet and um, the two other cup holders. Decent amount of room. There's not, there's not a ton of room back here, but it's good enough. It does get a little uncomfortable on long road trips, but like I said, we hardly ever take this on road trips anyway, so not that big of a deal. Still a decent sized back seat. And the interior has held up really well over the years. Another thing I would do if this is my truck is probably get an upgraded infotainment system. I know some people have done that to this generation of Tundra. But I really like the spec of this one too, the silver on the outside and mostly gray interior. I think that looks really nice. Everything has held up really nicely in here. This thing has been super reliable. We haven't had any issues with it. The only complaints that we really have is with the infotainment system, but it's really not that big of a deal. We'll go ahead and take the Tundra on a drive since I've never, I don't think I've ever done a POV style drive with this truck. Obviously that 5.7 liter V8 sounds amazing. Love the sound. Pretty loud engine too, but not like annoyingly loud. It's It just sounds really, really good. And obviously it's all bone stock, no exhaust or anything. Although I'd love to do that if it was my truck. Anyway, um, like I said, I don't think I've ever done a POV style drive video with this truck before. And like I said earlier in the video, I really haven't done a whole lot of videos with this truck over especially 10 years. Well, I've only been doing YouTube for nine years, but uh, cause like I said, we got this thing a year before I started making YouTube videos. So it's been around the longest and it's had like the least amount of screen time on this channel. And part of that is, like I said, just cause of its availability. My mom's always at work, so it's not always available to make a video with. So finally got a good time today to make a good 10 year review with it. There really isn't, you know, there hasn't been a whole lot to report with it, even despite us owning it for 10 years. I mean, we haven't really done anything to it. It hasn't had any issues, obviously. 
especially with only 75,000 miles. But even with higher mileage, these things are the most reliable trucks out there. Yeah, not, not a whole lot to report with it because, you know, it just drives every day to work and that's about it. It serves its, pur it serves its purpose well. She'll probably get another daily driver eventually, but I think we'll probably hang on to this thing for a long time, if not forever, just because of the low mileage and the reliability and these things are just such good trucks. It drives really, really good. And I don't drive it a whole lot, but I mean, I've driven it a lot since we've had it for so long. Rides really nice, acceleration's good, it's got great power. But yeah, engine sounds really, really good. Buttery smooth transmission. Yeah, drives and rides great. As expected, these things are solid trucks. wasn't even floored so it has pretty good acceleration and it sounds amazing I'll go ahead and floor it right here it's gonna spin like crazy Acceleration is really, really good. This thing just sounds so, so good. But uh, yeah, it obviously when I floored it there, it did a little burnout, but acceleration is still pretty good. I don't have my zero to 60 uh, timing thing with me, my draggy device, so I don't know what that was. But yeah, this thing is a really nice truck to drive. Another complaint that I do have with it though, it's not a big one, but one thing that would be nice to have that all the other cars have is cooling seats in the summer. It has heated seats that work fine, but it would be really nice to have cooling seats as well. But yeah, basically to sum it all up, this truck has been perfect over the past 10 years. Uh, it has not given us any issues whatsoever as expected with a truck like this. Like I said, I hope to make more videos with it more often and give it some more screen time because it has the least amount of screen time on this channel. And uh, I hope to get better with that. But yeah, great truck over the last 10 years, no issues with it whatsoever. and. There's no plans of it going anywhere anytime soon. If there's if there's certain videos you want to see with this truck or any of the other family vehicles or any certain type of, of video in general, let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed the 10-year review on our 2014 Toyota Tundra. Thank you guys for watching.